No nonsense gin drinking. All gin, no nonsense. Hello gin lovers, welcome back. I'm Bobby Freeman and today my friends, we have rather a different video for you because we have three gins from Juan Distiller. Let me introduce you my friends to Poetic License Gin. And we have this little fellow here first of all, which is the Northern Dry Gin. Then we go here and we have, oh, one of my guilty pleasure, the Old Tom Gin. And talking of guilty pleasures, even guiltier a pleasure on the end here, we have a Strawberry and Cream Gin. So my friends, strap yourselves quite literally in as we blast through this uh, rather intriguing little trio for you today. Now they're not particularly mainstream yet so you may not have heard of them however I have heard a few rumblings. Now that may be because I haven't eaten my breakfast yet but it's also because these guys are tipped to be the next sort of big thing. So let's have a look what they say about themselves on the website shall we? Now then, as you know, I do like to do the accent from where the gin is from. However, these guys, as you've guessed from the northern dry gin, they are from the north of England, from a place called Sunderland, which is near a place called Newcastle. And we uh, sort of affectionately here in the UK refer to people from that area as Geordies. In fact, I'm not sure if Sunderland is technically Geordies, but for me, I'm probably going to upset them, but for me, it's close enough to attempt an a Geordie, an a Geordie, to attempt a Geordie accent. However, as you know, I am an expert at many, many accents, but uh, Geordie is not, um, it's not one of my specialities and I do struggle massively. So, but I thought to myself, yeah, it would, the easy option would have been not to have done it. But you know me, I like to provide entertainment. Are you not entertained? For my subscribers. So I'm going to attempt a rather sort of uh, uh, struggling effort at which to do this Geordie accent. So here goes. A big punch of juniper is finely balanced with green cardamom for a warm, spicy flea of a man. See, that's the trick. If you're not very good at doing a Geordie accent, all you have to do is say the word man at the end of every sentence. Why aye, man? Leave us alone, man. How are the lads, man? With undertones of lemon and eucalyptus, the inclusion of Parisian lime. Lame? Lime. Lame. Lame. Oh my god. I'm sorry to anyone from Sunderland or um, Newcastle. That was truly the most spectacularly bad accent I think I've ever done on this show, but at least I had a go. So to me that doesn't sound sort of uh, massively different to uh, many other sort of what I would call sort of core gins on the market. So let's have the old top off and here we go. I'll tell you what, they have, all three of them have got talk, corks. Torques? All three of them have got corks, so maybe for the first time ever, we'll do the triple cork test. Here we go. Yeah, I think that worked, didn't it? Anyway, let's start at the beginning again. So, one more time. Lovely. So, mmm, you know what? Sounds like it, uh, sounds like it. Hang on a minute. No, it doesn't sound like anything. Smells like a good quality core gin. Let's have a quick. Oh, you can tell. I tell you what, it does sound like a, a, a oh God, Sam, what do I keep saying saying sound? <laughs> It does smell like a good quality gin, but there's something slightly different. I reckon there's something of the limey about it. It did say the limes in there. And in fact, I say it's kind of a sort of standard sort of uh, a core gin, but not that many have limes in them. The old Tanqueray, what was it? Tanqueray, Tanqueray, come on, come on, come on, come on, remind me. Rangpur! Rangpur, the Rangpur. That was the last one I think that had uh, sort of limes in a core gin. So let's, let's not mess around. Let's get the old uh, tonic in there. Where is the old tonic? Oh, there it is up there. Right, so marry it up. Oh, the lid's gone. Never mind. We don't worry about that sort of thing on this show. So here, my friend, here, my, here, my friends. So, my friends, here we go. The first in the line of the Poetic License gins, the Poetic License Northern Dry Gin. Here we go. Cheers. Ooh. Do you know what? That that's very nice. I it, it, again, this is going to be. We look at the sort of competition. Here. It's going to be in the sort of the core gin section. So your beef eaters, your tankerays, your brokers, and your sipsmiths, right? I'd say it's definitely, definitely on a par with any of them. But there's something kind of different. There's a kind of depth to it. And it's kind of a, there's like a core sort of deep sort of echoey flavor. That makes no sense at all, but I, I, that, that's the only way I can describe it. It's kind of a sort of a, a liminess, but it's kind of just goes 
deep down, like it's got sort of a, a root and a sort of a big core there. And it's kind of mixed with sort of a warm spiciness as well. And that sort of blossoms through this liminess. And with the, again, with the perfect balance of the old junipers and all the classic sort of gin flavors. And I tell you what, that makes an excellent, excellent gin. And it's one of those ones that doesn't just give you a sort of a snap of flavor and then it's gone. It kind of lingers and swirls and sort of lets you know that it's been there. It's almost like an, an echo sort of hangs around for a little bit, a little bit longer, a little bit after you've swallowed the gin. But I tell you what, that for a, a, a gin that I've never heard of before and just come out of nowhere, I am very, very pleased with that. And I can definitely stand up with the best of them. So then, here we go with the Old Tom. Now, for those of you who don't know what Old Tom is, I haven't featured it on the show for a while. Old Tom sort of bridged the gap between the original sort of raw spirit when the Dutch brought it over hundreds and hundreds of years ago, uh, which was called Geneva or Genevieve, whichever way you want to pronounce it, and the London dry gins that we have today. There was sort of a, a missing link between the two. And Old Tom was kind of a sweeter, more sort of viscous sort of version of it. And I have a super soft spot for Old Toms. I haven't done many. I did Hortus Old Tom from Lidl. I did uh, Heyman's Old Tom, which is excellent. I think I did Her, Her No Old Tom, which was from, I want to say, Switzerland or Finland or somewhere like that, I might be wrong. And like I say, it's kind of a guilty pleasure because it's very, very sweet and has a lot more sugar in it than usual. So let's have a good old sniff of this little fellow. Drop some in the glass. Oh, and look at the color. I tell you what, these are excellent bottles for pouring as well. I'm, keep I'm keeping an extremely dry desk today. Now look at the color of that. That's a nice sort of, sort of yellowy sort of color. And I believe this is because it is a barrel aged gin. Let me just check on the website here. And again, we'll have another go at the Geordie action, shall we? This classic, originating from the mid-1800s, delivers a sweeter and more peppery taste. From the botanicals alone, we nurture this sweet taste while, 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 while our oak casks continue to add flavour and colour, man. So this is interesting. Not only is it an old tom, it's an old tom that's been aged in oak barrels or casks. Now, I've been meaning to new, uh, sort of uh, feature more um, uh, barrel-aged gins on the show because they kind of sort of bridge the gap between gin and whiskey. I know there are a lot of whiskey lovers out there, so I'm going to feature those more on the show. So uh, let's get stuck into this one, shall we? See what it's like. So here we go. A good old sniff. Mmm, yeah, exactly what I was expecting of an old tom. Kind of thick and, as I say, viscous. I use this word quite a lot, but it's the perfect way to describe an old tom. But there's a kind of a woody sort of warm tingliness about it, which is what you expect when it's been uh, aged in those barrels. So marry up with a little bit of tonic in there. Not too much because this is going to be really big flavors in this one. So here we go. Uh, poetic license, Old Tom, I say. Uh, cheers. Oh, now this. Oh, this is a different gin. This is a different way, actually, in fact, of enjoying gin because I, as I say, I love old Tom. It's lovely and sweet and kind of thick and almost kind of treacly, but don't imagine actual treacle. Bring it back to about 5% of what treacle is, the thickness and everything. You're kind of sort of in that area. However, my friends, when you marry that with that thick sweetness of the old Tom and what and to kind of offset it against the other, you've that makes something truly special and spectacular. <laughs> Oh man, it's kind of warm and sort of, uh, sort of, well, warming, but at the same time, tingly and sweet and spicy in it. Oh, it just works beautifully. And what a difference as well. What a contrast to their original gin. These guys have clearly got a, one hell of an imagination. And that's what, I, that's what you need if you're going to produce gin. You need imagination because there are so many out there. You need to be imaginative and original and make things that are going to make your brand stand out from the rest. So then, my friends, we have had the starter, we have had the main course, and now it is time for the dessert because let's get stuck into the old Old strawberry and creams. Let's see what they say about this before we have a good old slug of it. Uh, shall we go for the old Geordie accent one more time? Why not? Let's torture you a little bit more. Sat on a checkered blanket, man, in the park, man, with friends while the sun is shining, man. That's our recommended way to enjoy this strawberry and cream gin, man. We recommend serving it with premium elderflower tonic water over ice and a fresh strawberry, man. 
Okay, right, that's it, I promise. No more terrible Geordies. There are Geordies literally chucking their TVs and, and laptops out of the window as we speak in protest at my awful accent. However, let's not get distracted. Let's give this little fellow a sniff. So, uh, and before we do, let me pop that back in quickly. We did have one which I wasn't technically strawberries and cream before, but it kind of tasted like it to me. And this was way back at the beginning of the channel. And it was this one, the King of Soho Variorum Gin. And it's kind of strawberry and sort of essence of vanilla in there which to me made it taste like strawberry and cream and I actually wrote to them and said why have you called this variorum gin and apparently a variorum if you look it up it's something like a, like a, a, a second a copy of the original version, which, which, which I guess makes sense because it's a, a copy of the original uh, King of Soho gin, which is up there. But who gives a damn? Who knows what the word variorum means? It's very sort of pretentious and impressive, but I think if they'd have sold it as strawberry and cream gin, they'd have sold a lot more. Anyway, I digress. The people at Poetic License clearly thought along the same lines as I did. So let's, I'm so looking forward to this. Let's have a good old sniff. Here we go. Hang on, no, I put it in the glass, then I should. Let's do it properly, shall I? Make it sing. Oh my goodness! It's actually sort of a, oh, it's actually, I was going to say pink, but it's actually sort of a, a brownie colour. Not if you can, sorry if you can see that. Wow. Okay, and I, I could smell it already. I literally, the, sometimes the smell just cannot wait to get up the nostrils. So it's a, give it a bit of a helping hand, shall we? Hang on. Oh, oh my God, it's just thick with strawberry essence, but yet you can even, believe it or not, get this kind of the creaminess in the aroma as well. It's not just like a sort of a, a zingy strawberry, it's a sort of a, it, it's a, it's a creamy strawberry, there's no other way of describing it. So let's, I might try this one neat as well, you know, but let's marry it up with a tonic first of all, see how we get on. In you get also, not too much. There we go, just a little bit to release the flavour. So here we go, poetic licence, strawberry and cream gin, I say to you, cheers. Ooh! Very different to how I expected it, to be honest. It's kind of um, subtle on the strawberries, but there we go in the aftertaste. The aftertaste is, how have they done that? It didn't actually say really the botanicals they've used, obviously strawberries, I don't know how they got the creaminess in there, but I'm literally still now, these are very, lingering kind of gins. The flavours linger on in there and it's just swirling around, as I say, like a kind of a shadowy echo of those flavours. Hang on, let me just refresh it. Do you know what? I'm not sure if this one is cask, uh, cask aged as well, but I'm, I'm getting, maybe because that colour, I, I wouldn't be surprised if this one has got a bit of the cask age action going on as well. Because along with those strawberry and sort of beautiful creamy vanilla -y sort of essence in there, there is a kind of a, a lingering sort of, ah, I, I want to use a different word to woodiness, almost like a sort of a ah, kind of a, a warm bark sort of taste. There's definitely something of the wood about it, but there's something that lifts it out, something kind of slightly more zingy about it. It's almost a little bit kind of Christmassy. Maybe it's cinnamon, maybe there's a bit of cinnamon in there or something, just kind of lifting, teasing out of those sort of bed of sort of thick flavours. I don't know, I'd like to sort of be interested to know more about the botanicals. But again, what I like about it, there's lots of strawberry gins out there. You've got Brokers have got a strawberry one here. You've got obviously the uh, King of Soho there, which I mentioned. You've got Beef Eater over there, which has got a strawberry. That's, uh, but did Gordon's do a strawberry? They did a berry one. I don't know, there's lots of strawberry ones out there, but, this one, you'd think they'd all sort of be fairly similar, but every one is different, and this is massively different to the rest of them. And they it's like they've sort of weren't satisfied with just, they don't want anything that's run of the mill. They want to have something that's unique and quirky and their own, and they've definitely done it with this one. Well, in fact, as well as every single one I've tried. So then, you're thinking to yourselves, well, they sound like a very interesting and intriguing little trio of gins, but surely they're a smaller, less known distillery. Surely they're going to be hiking the prices up a little bit. Well, my friends, I can confirm to you, and I'm very pleased to say, you would be bang wrong in that assumption, because these little fellows come absolutely on the nail accurately to my perfect price that I like to play for gin. They are $29.99, one penny under my £30 top bracket, which works out at about $39 or about €32.99. And my friends, if you ever, 
ever wanted to try some unique and uh, genuinely sort of authentic and sort of original gins for that price, that is bloody excellent. And in fact, I say to you guys at the Poetic Licence Distillery, keep up the good work, my friends. So guys, what a video today. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you found it interesting or useful or it has invoked any kind of emotion at all, then please, as always, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like the video and press the little bell icon so you get a notification when my new videos come out. And if you want to support the show, head over to the old Patreon page uh, or indeed press the join button below this video. But until next time, guys, you know the drill. Take care, stay safe. Thank you to all my patrons and keep drinking the gin man.